Bitcoin is a completely different beast. It's not even crypto in my mind. Bitcoin is Bitcoin. You won't be able to compete with something which has no CEO, no marketing team. Bitcoin is a no-brainer. You don't even have to think about anything. You just buy it and you are okay. I love free market. You do your stuff, you put it out there, and if people like it, they'll buy it. All of a the sudden, they're like, my whole life, I did not see what money actually is. And then they go like, what else is wrong? What else can I question? It's always your responsibility. It's easy to say, oh, I'm broke because taxes move. Come to Dubai. No tax. Next, oh, I'm broke because my job pays to find another job. Next, you have to be in charge. Bill Gates hates it. Okay, well, great. Just because Bill Gates hates it, then does it make it bad? It's like watching your entire life from one angle. But if you move your chair and you look at the room from the other side, it's like, holy, there is a TV there. There is a window there. I didn't know that. I think Bitcoin offers you that. It's, it's all about freedom. It's all about core living kind of DNA mentality. It's like most likely you're going to be an entrepreneur if you are a Bitcoiner. Most likely you are someone who traveled, who experienced life in a different way. What do you think will be the role of Bitcoin in the world in two, in 20 years? Wow, beautiful question. I mean, I would say now, as we are in 2024, I think Bitcoin has established itself as a store of value, right? And I think this is a narrative. I don't think it's a currency yet, but I think it will provide some form of base layer for companies, entrepreneurs to build on top of it. So I think in 20 years, we will have things built on Bitcoin. Uh, imagine as if you rewind to the 70s when the dollar was backed by the gold, right? So you could only print a certain amount of dollars if you had reserves of gold. So I think we would kind of be in that kind of situation where Bitcoin is going to be the layer zero, if you want to call it like this. And on top of it, you will have multiple kind of things, multiple services, multiple companies that will provide different things. It could be inscriptions, it could be art, it could be currencies, you know, that kind of stuff. And it's funny because, you know, when we think about it, I mean, seven, okay, 20 years from now, I'll be 70. <laughs> so I'll be really old. <laughs> but it's not, even though it feels like a lot, A, I don't think it's a lot. And B, the amount of progress we will do in 20 years is going to be exponential. Like, look at the iPhone. The iPhone came out in 2007. And look how much we progress from there. So I think 20 years is a good number because it seems far, but I don't think it's that far. And the amount of progress we will see built on Bitcoin will be exponential, if it makes sense. And you uh, also talk way more than I do about altcoins. Uh, you also uh, interview people about that. And I always thought, or I still think that all the altcoin use cases could actually be better built either on Bitcoin or uh, on a centralized database. Like either you want it really secure and you want to build it on Bitcoin or it's uh, centralized on a database. Um, do you also think like the, the, the use cases or like the altcoin sphere could actually move on when you talk about inscriptions, uh, NFTs and all those, uh, all those things, do you think that could actually move on, on Bitcoin and, and could kind of replace, uh, uh, the altcoins? I think so. That's a beautiful observation. I think in fact, we've seen it like, uh, technically Litecoin was supposed to be a test net for, for Bitcoin, right? So. And now kind of Litecoin is faded into nothing um, as opposed to, for example, Ethereum. Uh, back in the days, we used to call Litecoin the silver of Bitcoin, but now the silver is kind of Ethereum. So it's kind of all over the place. But if you look at what happened with Ethereum, for example, they have this NFT thing. And then a few years later, boom, Bitcoin said, well, that's actually interesting. I'll take it. So it does serve as a test net. And I also agree with you, like an Oracle system would be much more useful for the majority of the tokens out there, because at the end of the day, when people are saying we are decentralized, I don't think they realize entirely what decentralization means. They think about Solana's or Ethereum, like proof of work and proof of stake are very different things. As much as I'm up for, because I, I, I strongly believe, like we discussed it on, on, uh, on my podcast, on the other channel, and, you know, I use, I have, I am a Bitcoin guy. I have a small percentage of my portfolio I play with, and the whole objective of that is to multiply my Bitcoin. So when I purchase an altcoin and the altcoin doubles, I sell half into Bitcoin. So it's a different way for me to play the game and maximize my Bitcoins at the end of the day. And I've been successful uh, at that. If I wouldn't have done it, I would have less Bitcoin. So it comes with risk and you, you have to, also it's an exchange. You have to give energy. So you have to put time into it and research and like you said so beautifully on, on the podcast last time, Bitcoin is a no-brainer. You don't even have to think about anything. You just buy it and you are okay. Whether when you purchase an altcoin, 
you have to be mindful that that thing could very much go to nothing. <laughs> so it requires a different energy there. But I also agree, most of Ethereum itself could be an oracle. Solana could be an oracle. Actually, if Solana would be an oracle, it would be more stable. That's for sure. And, uh, you know, and not as much as people say is decentralized. I beg to differ. You know, majority of the tokens are still, I think 60% of the tokens are in one, two wallets. So very much centralized. But I think, yeah, though, yeah. they have a, a purpose. I don't think Bitcoin is going to conquer the 100% of the space. I think there's going to be a small chunk, maybe, for other coins to solve other problems. I don't think, for example, I'm a big fan of Chainlink. It's a beautiful token. Uh, I think it's a beautiful ecosystem. But that could be an Oracle. Yeah, it doesn't have to be on Ethereum or they are everywhere, but they could be a centralized uh, database. So there is that kind of thing, you know, and... The question you want to answer yourself is, why do you have a database and why you have a token? Like most of the most of the blockchain, they don't need a token. The, the token has no utility, quote, if you see what I mean. It's interesting for me because I think the most like, like blockchain is a really inefficient way to store data. Like when you look from a software development standpoint. Uh, and that's why I always let's say like, oh, maybe the use case should be like, because do, do we really need like decentralization in video games, like <laughs> all, all, all those things? Uh, it's, it's interesting for me to think about. And I usually only have like uh, Bitcoiners on the a podcast who like not, don't even gamble with that. And I love it that you classify this as as, uh, as playing, as gambling, as, as like, oh, I want to have a small portion of my portfolio and, and I can play with that and I can try to do it. And, and it's it's when it's in that way, it's completely legit for me. When I have a problem with that is like when you're like, oh no, no, like that's the future. Like this, this will replace Bitcoin or something like that. Then, then it's like, oh, no, no, it's not. Yeah. I've, uh, I've heard that multiple times, uh, people calling Bitcoin. Uh, I, I was talking to, uh, Vitalik Fader on my podcast. We had a podcast together and he was saying that Bitcoin is, Bitcoin is old and needs to be replaced. If you see what Charles Hoskinson, the founder of Cardano, says about Bitcoin, you know, everyone has an opinion. And I think it's great. I, I, you know what? I love free market. I love free market. You do your stuff, you put it out there. And if people like it, they'll buy it. Amazing. Right. The, the trouble with these companies wanting to compete with the king, AKA Bitcoin is they, they start from the wrong angle. I mean, I shouldn't say wrong because always it's all subjective and objective, but my idea is this one. Like if you have a company you started and you are the founder, well, you can't compete to begin with because Bitcoin doesn't have that. <laughs> so you already lost, right? So can you do something different? Can you provide a different service? Absolutely. But you won't be able to compete with something which has no CEO, no marketing team. Bitcoin is a completely different beast. It's not even crypto in my mind. Bitcoin is Bitcoin, right? There's, there's a difference there. But then if you are someone who degens into cat and dog tokens, right? And they've seen something on the newspaper. They, the guy who purchased whatever coin dog and they became a multimillionaire. There is an appetite for them to say, oh, it's me. It's like the lottery mentality, right? And the lottery mentality sadly has two issues. One, most of the people are losing money, right? And two, whoever wins the lottery in 12 months is broke. So it's not a great, statistically speaking, like if you look into the data, all the winners, they won the lottery, they've lost the money in eight to 12 months. So I don't think it's a great thing to have in mind as I'm going to win the lottery. Um, also, I don't like the fact that it's quote out of your control, right? I think luck is when preparation meets opportunity. So you are the creator of your destiny. I don't like to buy a ticket and gamble it in that sense. At least if I do so, it has to be a small and controlled very controlled portion of my portfolio because you can degen into stuff super fast. Hence why when I told you I have a, I'm a Bitcoiner, but then on the weekends I go to the casino. <laughs> that kind of vibe, you know? And as long as you control yourself and you, I even have an allocation. Like I have every four year cycle, I give myself a portion of money to have fun with. And if the money finishes in two months, then I'm done for four years. Like, because if you don't control yourself like this, you can go down into a path where you click a couple of things and you start losing Bitcoin, right? Or losing money, depending. For me, it's the same thing. But as long as it's controlled, it's like, imagine you, I don't know, you have a salary, you have a job, you have a, an income, and then 
every now and then you take the wife, the girlfriend, the boyfriend, and you just go out and you have dinner, you treat yourself, you buy some clothing. That's my, my degen, right? But it's very much meticulously controlled because it's so easy. You know, it's so easy to get into the trap where you exchange some Bitcoin to some Solana, which no financial advice you should not do. <laughs> but if you find yourself in a scenario where you wish to sell Bitcoin to buy Solana, then you start clicking around and buying Doge and meme and, and not, not Doge, sorry, dog coins and Solana, NFTs. And little you know, you've lost everything. It's so easy because it doesn't feel money. I mean, it's not money Solana, but whatever. You see what I mean? Like, it's really easy to, the same with the credit card dilemma. Like back in the days when I was a kid, we used to have cash in our pockets. You know, if you go out and you have 50, uh, whatever bucks or 50 euros in your pocket, when you don't have any more in your pockets, that's it, you're done. So you can control your spending in a much more sophisticated way. But now it, you tap your card, you don't even know. That's why everyone is broke, I think. Because they don't, they don't even know their economy. Like I thought finance was, that's why, by the way, I came into Bitcoin via a necessity, which was, I need to be better with money. So, okay, the first question is, what is money? That's, that's my entry in, into the old shenanigans of crypto and Bitcoin. Because I think it's a problem. Society, like people, they don't even know how much money they spend and how much money they make. So when you draw a table saying, this is how much comes in and this is how much goes out, you just blow their minds. Like, oh, wow, this is how much I'm spending. Oh, wow, maybe I shouldn't rent that place. Maybe I shouldn't buy that car. Maybe I shouldn't buy the food over there. Maybe I should cook myself lunch. Crazy, right? So what I see altcoins are amplifying the problem in a really weird angle I'm going here, but I think they're going to allow you to demolish your precious store of value into a couple of clicks with the idea that you can make millions overnight. So the old thing is rigged <laughs> from the start. Does it make sense what I'm saying, by the way? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I, I love it a lot. Uh, and I did not even want to interrupt you, but, but uh, okay. it's like for me, when, when you have uh, all those, those altcoins and you recognize, as we said before, like you, it's, it's gambling, uh, then it's uh, totally fine. And it's like, um, it makes so much sense that Bitcoin is the way it is. But what do you think, uh, maybe stepping back one step, what do you think makes Bitcoin so unique? Like why is Bitcoin this secure thing and not my space that will be replaced by Facebook? Yeah, that's a beautiful question. I mean, first of all, there is a, a super common mistake. People say, oh, 21 million. It's not 21 million because it's less. Because A, some, some have gotten lost forever. Uh, B, some people will never sell. C, we have a Satoshi allocation. So when you break down the supply, which is one of the most attractive things besides portability, divisibility, and all those beautiful properties, for me, the fact that is, there is a cap is amazing. Like, at least I know how many there are. Whether when it comes to gold, for example, I don't know. Maybe we can find a mine next month and the price goes down. Maybe there is gold in the sea. Maybe there is gold in space. I mean, it's impossible to put a cap on a metal because we don't produce it. Whether Bitcoin is programmed to a certain degree to be capped to 21 million, let's say for the sake of it, even though it's less. That's the first interesting part. Second interesting part is the fact that it's digital. So that means it can be truly yours. Like anything physical can be, excuse me, can be stolen, can be taken, right? So if I, oh, it's funny when you break down the ownership kind of paradigm, you realize quickly you don't own anything. Uh, everything you think you own, someone else has it. For example, uh, I speak a lot with people in real estate. And when I tell them the house is not yours, they, they go crazy. Oh, what do you mean it's not mine? It's mine. And I'm like, no, I'll tell you two reasons why. One, if you pay a tax to own it, well, that means someone can take it away if you don't pay the tax, right? And second of all, try not to pay a speed ticket. So you, for those of whom think you own your house, you just go to speed somewhere really fast and you get a fine. Well, try not to pay it. See what happens. They're going to come. They're going to take the house to pay the ticket. So whether Bitcoin, if stored properly, because if you leave your Bitcoin on exchanges, it's the same thing. If you buy an ETF, it's the same thing. But if you do self-custody in your own hands, they can try and make you say the phrase or the seed phrase or the 12 words, 18 words, depending on your story. But you can always say, I'm not telling you. I don't care whatever you do to me, which you have to be strong because they can do some terrible things to you. 
but you have the option to decide where there is nothing else that gives you that power, that control, because everything else is an illusion. I, I used to have gold. I used to be a gold bug, you can say, in London, but um, I, I came quickly to realize, <laughs> to realize that it wasn't mine. Like there was a dude with a gun into a cavo and he said, well, there is your name on a piece of gold in the corner right there. You can't see it. You can't touch it, but it's yours. And I'm like, well, not really. You have the gun. You have the cavo. You have the key. I only see a post-it. You could do the same thing to the next guy who comes in. You move my post-it, you put Robin on top of it, and then it's yours. Like, I, I, I can't, okay, I can keep it in my own house, but then anybody can come in and take it. So it's not safe, especially if you live in London. I mean, not to shade anything. I lived 17 years in the UK, but it's not the safest place by any means. So then you have a problem there because you have some valuable in your house. You put them into a safe or whatever it might be, but someone can come in and crack it, whether Bitcoin is the most safe and secure network. So I have security, safety, divisibility, transportability, and there is a cap. So now all of a sudden it becomes, and I can truly own it by the way, if stored properly, now it becomes super attractive, <laughs> at least to me, right? And it's, it's, it's really interesting. And you said before something that's, uh, that's really interesting that I want to touch on before I forget it. You said, um, money, oh, Bitcoin, oh no, it's the same thing anyways. Um, and like when we have money and we look at the properties of money, like there's unit of account in there, there's medium of exchange in there, there's like every, all the aspects of, of, of the money in there that probably all my viewers already know. Um, and there's a lot of debates going on in the Bitcoin community. Um, how long the fiat system will, uh, last. If the fiat system will last, there uh, are those of the opinions like it will last three years. <laughs> there are those that say like it will never vanish. Uh, it will always be uh, there. First of all, like, do you think that fiat will always be a thing? Even if we zoom out like 2,000, 5,000 years from now, I, I'm, I'm aware that most think that 100 years it definitely will be a thing because governments and the network effects are hard to break. But do you think it will be ever replaced? I, I think fiat is going to be there forever. Like um, I had a, I had a beautiful debate. I was hosting Peter Schiff versus Da Vinci on my podcast, gold versus Bitcoin. They've gone on and on about fiat and properties. And here's the thing, and that's my opinion. I could be wrong here, but um, I, I believe that most people, they love banks because banks are providing a service. They don't care about ownership. They don't care about devaluing. The they don't care about inflation, CP lie, as I call it. It's, it's convenient to have your money. <laughs> I just, I'm, I need to be sorry with myself because I'm about to say two things that are terrible. Your money in the bank. So first of all, they're not money. Second of all, they're not yours, but whatever. <laughs> let's pretend, <laughs> let's all pretend that you have your money in the bank. Okay. It's convenient. And if you, if you speak to someone who has done zero research, if you are someone who's, who's been, I mean, born everywhere, I guess, in Europe or anywhere in the US or anywhere, The bank is okay. Of course, the bank is solid. Yeah, the bank has my money. Uh, what, what's wrong with you? Like, look, I can show you my app. It says the balance. Like, and people like it. People that want self-custody do not want responsibilities. Majority of them, I believe, uh, hence why banks were invented. It's a service, right? And, and the service has a price. Da Vinci gave me a beautiful example the other day. And he said, when you go to a restaurant and you want to eat, you take off your jacket and you give your jacket to, to, to the guy who manages the jackets. He keeps the jackets, the value, the goods, and he gives you a token with a number 29. Okay. Now it's super important for you to realize you don't have a jacket anymore. It's gone. Like the jacket belongs to the guy who has it. He can sell it, rent it, break it, burn it. You can wear it. <laughs> he or she can do whatever he wants. You on the other hand, have a piece of plastic. It's a promise that if you want the jacket back, If the guy is still there, <laughs> because it might be gone, he owe you the jacket. Now, what happens when the guy is gone and he sold the jacket, like FTX, for example? What happens when they are playing tricks or the banks? The banks does not have your money. The bank takes your money and they do stuff with it. They do dodgy stuff because that's how banks works. Well, then you go to court and then the bank is entitled to only give you the value of the fiat at the moment of the exchange. So that means, long story short, If you purchase an asset, AKA Bitcoin, who goes up in value, in my opinion, so far as far I've been doing, and then you exchange it for whatever some reasons, you deposit it on Coinbase, on Kraken, on any exchange, means you lose custody. And then they sell it because they want to do dodgy business and you sue them 
they're only entitled to pay you the value of the asset at the point of, you know, problems, let's say, which means they're keeping the good stuff and they give you the bad stuff. So even though everyone knows yet banks are charging us a lot of money for transactions, it takes forever to move money. You are forbidden to, to take cash. I got married in Greece and I was living in the UK and I went to the bank and I said, Hey, I would like to have some money, some fiat, sorry, to get married in Greece shenanigans. You can't, it's too much. I wanted like 20,000 euros. I think I was asking or, or somewhere in that region. Oh, you can't uh, withdraw more than 900 uh, euros because you can't carry it. So you can't carry it through the airports. They don't give it to you. There are limits. You, you, you're getting hammered on the exchange rate. You can't operate on a weekend. And yet everybody loves bank. Like they are convenient. You have your card in your pocket. You go to the cafe, you tap the card. So I don't think the average person is even aware of all of those problems. Now, there is a portion of people like you and me, we are very much well aware of this, hence why we are Bitcoiners, but I think we represent a minority. And I don't think Bitcoin is going to get so broadly distributed because people, here's what I'm, what I'm getting to my conclusion is like, it's much easier to point a finger and blame someone else as supposed to take responsibility. Do you know how many people have told me, like, uh, no coiner, as I call them, or they have no exposure in Bitcoin? And they said, you're crazy. You have your entire net worth in your own hands. You are nuts. And I'm like, well, you are crazy because you have none of it. <laughs> but the reality, I think, is the majority of the people, I'll probably say 80-20, which is the, it's a law that always balances itself out. I think 80% of the people don't want that. If you offer them self-custody, they will freak out. Remember the words, access to a computer? No, 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 no. Uh, I want to have a custodian who keeps everything. But if I have a problem, I can go to the judge and they owe me my money. I don't know if you agree here, but I think the majority, they don't care. They don't care. I would like to disagree, but I nice. think I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <tell me. laughs> like, like my heart says, no, everyone will self custody Bitcoin. They will learn about it. And... But then I go out in my friends and family circles and then I'm asking about what they're doing with their money, what money is, what they think of inflation, all that stuff. And I'm, uh, <laughs> it's like, it's hard to say for me, but I'm just disappointed. Uh, but so like there, there's like a part in me that wants to see the world on a Bitcoin standard. Uh, but it's hard for me to imagine, but I'm still hopeful. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a hopeful person in general and I want to see uh, people on a Bitcoin standard. And I just see maybe we can build banks on top of Bitcoin, uh, which are, I don't know, uh, Fediment. I, I, I like that project a lot, um, where we have like lightning as the super highways. And then we have Fediments where then there could be a service provider. You don't even hold your keys, but but at least it's Bitcoin that uh, backing everything and you have the option to, to actually go back down to the base layer or at least self custody lightning or whatever. So that I'm, I'm hopeful for that, but let, let's say we don't come to that. How do you think um, Bitcoin will be mass adopted and, and how it, is it then only the store of value and it will go up in value because um, big banks and, and institutional investors and, and smart people buy it. Like gold, we also don't use as a store of, as medium of exchange or unit of account. And it has uh, like the 10x value or something like that than, than, than Bitcoin. I don't know exactly what it is right now. Yeah, that, that's a good point. I, I, think, I think so. Like look at with the ETF, look at the amount of money flying into the ETF at the minute. It's because if, if we are saying, I think you said it on, on the podcast we recorded on my channel, if Bitcoin is the perfect money, it's supposed to be used by everybody. So who am I to say you can't access it or you can't use it? So I think that was a really good point you made. I completely agree. I think the gene is out of the box, right? So people are going to decide how. I, I love the fact that you have the freedom to say, you know what? Um, I want to decide how to purchase my Bitcoin. I want to buy an ETF. Okay, great. I want Maurizio to have my own hands into the thing and custody myself. Great. Whether with money and banks, uh, with fiat, sorry, you can't do that. I mean, so having the option to choose, it's already a win. 
And by the way, if, if I can manage to convince one person in 20 years of podcasting, I, I would want, you know, I, I'm, I'm not here to try to convince or brainwash anybody. I'm just telling story, talking to people and explain why I think it's important to get, you know, to get over and, and get, and get in charge. Cause so many times people, there is a quote that I love that it says, when you point one finger to someone or something, three fingers are pointing back at you. So it is always your fault, always. And it's always your responsibility. So it's easy to say, oh, I'm broke because taxes, I'm broke, move, come to Dubai, no tax, next. Oh, I'm broke because my job pays to find another job, next. You have to be in charge. But the reality is most of the people in our society, they are, this is my conspiracy hat on, but um, the way how we've been educated, the way, the way how we think, is designed to make us employees, to make us pay taxes, to make us not care about money. I mean, if you speak to someone who has done university and economy, I mean, bro, <laughs> seriously, let, let's get, no disrespect to anyone who has studied for, uh, hats off to them, they've done whatever they've done, but they understood nothing of, of economy, like nothing, because they've been brainwashed with a an old system. And this is what I would want as well, if I would be, the king, uh, like they say in France, moi president, if I was the president, sorry for my French accent, I don't speak French, but that's something I remember. A friend says it all the time. If I was the president, I want people to be fat, stupid, and poor. Yeah, of course, that's that's the goal. I don't want them to be fit, smart, and, and, and rich, because that would mess me up. I mean, I wouldn't last a week as a king. So I get it. And, and I, you know, like I said, depends on how you look at the angle you are seeing the story, right? But I think it's important that we, we owe ourselves to say, hey, as far as I know, I have one life. Time is my favorite asset. It goes even over Bitcoin. I don't know if you've seen Michael Saylor reposted a, uh, a poll that uh, Mr. Dell said, uh, do you prefer love, Bitcoin? I put love and passion, whatever it was. I think it goes over Bitcoin because to me, love is for Bitcoin. So in the end, it's a cycle, but whatever. Uh, I think time is my my favorite asset. It goes above anything. Money, above Bitcoin, about everything. Time is everything. Because as far as I know, uh, I can't rewind it. And it's also limited. And I don't know when the cap is going to be. So even trickier <laughs> if, if I think about it. But then we spend most of our time sleepwalking into a life that has been designed on top of us. Even the language you speak, it's a brainwash, if you think about it. Like the way you say thank you, the way you eat, the food you eat, uh, the stuff you watch, the music you listen, all those things have been planted into our souls, or into our brains. And the goal for me is to remove them as much as you can. So if you can get to a point where you can deprogram yourself and start programming, downloading programs, you, I don't know if you've seen the Matrix, one of my favorite movie. I love he it. Can, he, can, he can decide to learn Kung Fu in a program. I think we, we are in that kind of phase where whatever you put in your, in your brain, you should be in charge of it. But the reality is most people, they like the autopilot. They don't want to be in charge because it comes with responsibility, right? They prefer to blame on the government. They blame, and again, not to go into politics, but there is people, they think, the voting makes a difference. I mean, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. You go to whatever every four years, make an X, and everything is going to be all right. Uh, this is like so far-fetched for me as a concept. It's like a, I can't even, I mean, I, I've tried. I've tried really extensively to think about why they believe that some puppet on TV is going to do something about it, whether in fact there is corporations behind with money telling the president what they want. But again, if you, if you say these things, people think you are a conspiracy theorist. And uh, that's why Bitcoin is, it takes away all, I don't know if I can swear on the channel, but it takes all the way the BS, all the BS is gone. Like there is no, there is nothing else. There is you and there is the asset and it's decentralized. There is no CEO. There is, it's out in the open. Nobody controls it. Everyone is Satoshi. You know, you have the miners, you have the nodes, you have people that use it. It's just open, distributed, beautifully decentralized. But it's so far-fetched from where we are now in society where people, majority of people that I think they buy Bitcoin now is because they want to make money. That's what I think. Because that's the, en the entry barrier of Bitcoin. You buy Bitcoin because you want to become a millionaire. Because you've seen on the news that crypto is the space for you to buy Lamborghinis and Bugattis. So you buy the Bitcoin. You don't even know what it is. You don't even read 
a, anything, you know, listen to podcasts. But then this thing drops 50% and you go, holy, what happened? Either you sell the bottom or you start documenting yourself. And for those of whom they stick around, they have to build some sort of an arm or a conviction. Otherwise, they'll go crazy because seeing your portfolio swinging, <laughs> I mean, at the level that Bitcoin does, you have to have something you hold, right? <laughs> Otherwise, you'll go crazy. And I think if you manage to go through that phase where you understood that this thing is the best thing you can possibly have in your life, well, then you have to deal with the fact that it goes up and down. But um, I think there is only a small percentage of us, like you and me and your, your viewers, your followers, probably are well-educated because they watch your podcast and your guests, but we are a small percentage. The majority of the people, I, I still go to the 80-20, which seem to be alone in life. They just, they, for the time being, they are in for the quick gains. And maybe then if they do one cycle to, and I was one of them, I'm not, I'm not saying I wasn't like the reason why I bought Bitcoin in 2013 is because I wanted to become rich. That's it. But then you get dragged into a, into the rabbit hole because you want to see how deep that is. And then the change, the story changes and you go, okay, I don't care about that anymore. I mean, I want to be free eventually. That's what money I think is used for to free yourself from whatever you do on a daily basis and become whoever you want to be. It's a tool you can use. There's probably many others, but the more you are invested with this thing, the more you research, the more you study it. And we kind of covered it briefly on, on, on my show, uh, the less you care about the price down to a degree, because it becomes clear that one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin, but you can go to someone who has never heard it, who has never seen it and say, hey, dude, one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. Yay. He thinks you are complete crazy because <laughs> he, he's so far away from that point of realization that there is no ground for him or her to understand what are these guys talking about? Are you crazy? Like there are people I spoke to, I speak to on a daily basis. And when I tell them like a simple question, like, do you think your money are in the bank? They just make the crazy face. Like this guy's, this guy's gone. Like, honestly, he's gone. And they call me a scammer because I live in Dubai and I don't pay taxes. And I'm like, you know, okay. Um, I don't even know what to say. Like, why am I scamming you? Because I live in Dubai and I don't pay taxes. You can come too, you know, <laughs> if you want. So it, it's just like, it's easy for people to build reasons why they shouldn't do stuff you do because they don't want to exit their comfort zone. You know, they don't want to leave the comfort zone. Traveling is a beautiful way to, to get awakened, as I say, you know, to understand, hey, the way how I do things is not the only way. There is people in China where I lived seven years, they didn't even know who Jimi Hendrix was. And I was like, how do you not know who Jimi Hendrix is? How, what? But they go, yeah, but you don't know who Ching Li is, which is a fantastic violinist. And I'm like, no, I don't know, but you don't know Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's a different way to see life, different way to experience living, you know? And if you don't expose yourself to those things, I think you will, you will miss out a beautiful point of view. It's like watching your entire life from one angle, exclusively from one angle. But if you move your chair and you look at the room from the other side, it's like, holy, there is a TV there. There is a window there. I didn't know that. I think Bitcoin offers you that, but you have to, you have to let go. You have to get to a point where you don't fight anymore. You just like embrace it. I don't know if it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. And I don't think the, those are conspiracy theories at this point. <laughs> like, uh, like the one, the first thing I think you, you said was the schools are designed to make you an employee and not, uh, someone that actually thinks for themselves. Um, I mean, they advertise that like they it, it's it's not a secret that they do that uh they like and at least in austria uh, i was going to uh, the school before um university they said like oh then you have those jobs available you will be that kind of a person that makes those jobs like they don't even give you the route of being self-employed being uh, an, a, a company like that's not even in the realm of possibilities and then when uh when you when, like you graduate from school you're uh, an, an an employee who fulfills a task when you graduate from university you are an employee that manages other other employees within the bigger system and that that that's how they designed that like they are at least in austria not very secretive about that like you go in there you talk with the directors do you talk with the teachers there 
they are very like they say exactly that and i also say like if you if you just want to have a normal job and you're like you're happy with, with that going nine to five uh, do whatever someone else says and then from uh five to nine in the morning you can do whatever you want it's okay it's it's not safe it's not a safe run like uh, let's be clear that's that's not a safe thing like there's so many stories like you got unemployed and then you don't find a job for like years it's not a safe safe route it's just a comfortable route which can be very a hard can be very hard route uh but they are very open i feel like with that and it's not not a conspiracy i i would not say it's a conspiracy but i i, I know what you're saying I mean, I think, I, I believe we are not alone in the universe. I think there is definitely life out there somewhere. And sometimes I, I'm thinking, imagine if someone would come here and just look at us for like 20 minutes and observe how we operate as society, they will freak the hell out. And that, that'll come out with a conclusion, which is people in charge are freaking awesome because they managed to create a situation where, I mean, there are people in charge of our health, they are overweight. Like, let that sink for a minute. I mean, I, I don't care about fat shaming. I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm being realistic here. Like, imagine if you go to the gym and your personal trainer is super fat. I mean, would you, would you trust the personal trainer fat? Well, no, because you are not giving me what I want. I want the personal trainer to be freaking built and raped because that's what I want to be, right? So if you are fat you're not selling me the personal trainer vibe. I'm sorry, but there is an image attached to it. So it, it's funny how everything works. And school, like you said, I agree. It's a messed up situation. Uh, there is something I've read. I think it was Pompliano talking about it, which was on my podcast. And he said, you have a fish and you have a monkey and you are judging them who's the fastest to climb a tree. Yeah, okay, of course the monkey is going to win, but the fish swims faster. So how can you have one task where you compare multiple brains? I was terrible at school because the thing is I learn in different ways. I hate reading books, but I can absorb content by a video and audio for hours. So am I bad? No, I'm different. So you can't have one box for everybody to fit into it, and you cannot be rewarded to remember. Who the hell wants to remember things Like you want to, you want to learn how to solve problems. You don't want to le learn how to repeat problems. So the whole thing is designed, if you ask me, in a completely wrong way. I was, I was working when I was 14. So back then, believe me, it was legal in Italy at least. And I've been around, I've traveled extensively. I've lived everywhere. And when I was in Ireland, I flew back with one of my best friends, which was Dutch and I thought, okay, I have many friends in my small village and they all went to school. They all study English. Great. I mean, I didn't study anything. I just went to Ireland. I had a couple of beers and I was fluent in six months. That was my school, right? And I, I, I went back to, to Italy with my friend and all those graduates, they couldn't even freaking say nothing because they were used to books. And the English teacher is Italian. I mean, how crazy this is. So, and the teacher in Italian teaches English in Italian, which is so messed up to so many different levels. Whether in fact, if you look into who speaks really good English are countries where the movies are not changed. There's no dubs on the movies, right? So you are forced to learn the language if you want to watch a movie. Maybe there are subtitles, which I argue they're not great, but they help. So your way to learn the language is basically one way. So you have one Italian guy to t who teaches to Italian people English, and he speaks Italian half of the lesson, maybe even 90% of the lesson, whether I think there should be a guy who speaks no Italian into a class who goes English from, this, from the get-go, right? And I get it, it's more aggressive, but that's how you learn, because otherwise you are not used to a confrontation. If there is a test on a piece of paper, you might be great. But as soon as I have someone coming from a different country, a different accent maybe, from Netherlands or Irish, <laughs> Ireland, beautiful accent, but it's tough, digest or even British, to be honest, you will look at them like they are speaking Arabic because you've never had that experience in your life. So the, and I, I don't want to say that whoever teaches English in Italian or in Italy is wrong, but we have not improved anything period. So there is, there is a difference between be practical and be into theory. Right. And I think they are two very different universes. And sometimes you just need to jump, man. You just need to jump in the mud 
Because if you stay too much into the, into the what ifs, into the practical side of it, it's probably not good as well. But I find if you want to learn, you know, it's like I, I had people, they said to me, oh, don't go to China. Have you ever been there? No, but I've seen, well, you've seen nothing, man. You have not been there. So everything you think you know, you don't. It, it was someone else's interpretation. So I've been there. I loved it. Been there seven years. Best, things I've, uh, best thing I've done in my life. I loved it. But um, why would you say, I mean, I have people in my network, they've uh, never been anywhere. They stayed in my valley. Uh, I'm from the north side, so near Lake Como in Switzerland. And they'll tell you, Italian food is the best food there is. And I'm like, okay, what food have you tried? You know, to say something like this, that Italian food is the best food you ever experienced, I'm expecting you to list me, I don't know, 10 countries at least. Where have you been yourself? Because if you, if you try... Chinese food in Italy, that's not Chinese food, my friend. That's Italian, Chinese, you know what I mean? Oh, I don't have to because uh, I know. And, and that kind of ego position is not just with food, it's with money also. Like, ah, you don't know anything about money. What's Bitcoin? It's a scam. You don't even know what it is. Like, oh, but I've seen on TV that this guy, Bill Gates, hates it. Okay, well, great. Just because Bill Gates hates it, then does it make it bad? And the option to question yourself it's something we have when we are small. When you are a small child, you ask everything, what is this? What is that? Well, why this is doing this? And then the more you become a grown up, you lose that ability to question stuff. And if there is one thing that I would like people to do is keep questioning it over and over and over. Why is this? Why am I broke? What is money? Why banks have my money? Why can I now do these things? Then if you, if you keep questioning things, I think you will live a very different life. Okay, life. It could be more stressful <laughs> down to a degree. I'm not saying it's not. But at least you are, I believe, trying to become a better version of yourself. Because we see life from a different perspective. And sometimes we forget that it's fine to disagree. It's great. Hey, if there is someone out there who, below, uh, who thinks 100% that fiat money is the best form of money there is, great. I mean, I'm happy for them right? So I'm not saying they have to take Bitcoin and they cannot use fiat. You, you do you, man. I'll do me. But at least you should get to the conclusion only after you've invested 200 hours or something like Michael Saylor says, if you spend 200 hours in study Bitcoin, then we can have a conversation. If you don't even look into the white paper, which is nine freaking pages, by the way, nine pages into a PDF, well, then I don't even want to have a conversation. I don't think, because then your point is so far-fetched from reality. I, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm going somewhere here, I'm rambling a lot, but I think you, I think you know what I mean with this, right? You, you have to, to put some, some work if you want to have a proper conversation, no? Thank you. You already made it halfway through the video and I'm really, really grateful to have you here. Two things make this channel possible. You as a watcher and listener who keep supporting this channel. And another one is all the Bitcoin brands that I partner up with, like 21 Bitcoin, who support me from the very start and where I personally buy my Bitcoin from. With Code Robin, you even get a discount when you buy Bitcoin with them. And now also Bitbox. Bitbox is the simplest and securest way to secure your Bitcoin. And I heard a crazy statistics. Only 2% of Bitcoiners hold their Bitcoin in a hardware wallet. How crazy is that? Don't be in that 98% bracket. Be in the 2% bracket. And if you have self-custody and you know your friend does not have, maybe he needs a Christmas present. Maybe he needs a birthday present. And a small life hack, if you use code ROBIN, you get 5% off your order plus you support my channel. And now let's get back to the video. I feel like it's uh, connected to being a truthful person. Like if you are saying something because you heard one thing on the news or like you picked up like uh, at the example you played like, oh, I heard Bill Gates doesn't like it. Uh, so I, I don't want to waste my time with it. Like you are not being truthful to yourself. You're being lazy. That's why you don't like it. Uh, and the, the moment when you start being truthful to yourself, you have to ask those questions. You ha always, uh, you you have to question what are things, what is money, what is that, what is that, uh, and then all of a sudden you you come to it's a as you said it's it's sometimes a more stressful life, uh, 
uh, <laughs> be, because all of a sudden you have to do homework, you have to do really diving deep, uh, you have to do things that you you maybe don't want to do uh, because it's 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 a nice life if if you just like uh, be in the matrix twenty four seven. You work your nine to five. You come home, watch your Netflix, go to bed, then stand up again and do the same thing all over. Have five weeks of holidays a, a, a year. Drive to uh, Croatia, increase two times a year, and and and, and do this like till, till you're seventy and you die. So like that's comfortable. It's 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 my version of hell. Like I would never love yeah. that, but, but but other people would like that. Uh, and it's uh, the the moment when you start being a truthful person, a lot of things change. And this is also my next question for you. Actually, when you say all the things that are not directly uh, related to Bitcoin. Uh, did you get that already before Bitcoin? Because you you said like you're 50 or yeah, I'm, I'm 47. Yeah, this year. Oh, 47. Yeah, yeah. You look really like, way young. Like I was like, oh, you're probably like 35 or something like that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> uh, but uh, when you um, talk about all that things, did you discover that before Bitcoin and Bitcoin came in and like it was this puzzle piece that was a little bit missing, or did you actually started critical thinking? because of Bitcoin? No, I mean, everything was kind of a puzzle in a way. It's funny because when you do puzzle, you have a, you have a strategy of puzzle. You do the border first, whatever people do these days, I don't know. But um, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just putting pieces on the board, you know, kind of trying to puzzle my life. And everything kind of started off pure fear. So I thought traveling and running away from who I was uh, I had a really bad breakup and I didn't know what to do. I had a business I wanted to sell. So I sold my business and I traveled to Ireland thinking, I'm going to leave me. So whatever happened to me, my ex-girlfriend, the company I didn't like anymore, it's gone. And now I'm going to become a new person, which is not what happens, by the way. Bob Marley said beautifully, you cannot run away from yourself. So problems are going to come. So what I experienced a few months of, yay, amazing, I'm in Ireland, everything is new, new people, new language, new everything. And then a few months later, they come and knock and they are bigger demons because you left them and they were working out in the gym, you know? <laughs> so my old experience, which has been, I travel a lot. I lived in many places, in many countries, and it was out of fear because I, I thought I, I, could, I could run away from everything. And then at some point, I, I had to face everything in one go, and that destroyed me. Because the more you wait, the more the obstacle is going to become difficult to overcome. So then one day I had to pay the bill, because you have to pay the bill. Uh, it's inevitable. And then that destroyed me completely. And this is important because I think I've never met anyone who has been acknowledging of something. It can be your body. It can be, let's say, if you are not in shape or you are broke or you don't like your job or you don't like your partner, if there is something you really want to change and you put the mindset into it, it's impossible not to be successful. I, 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 don't, I don't believe it. I, I refuse to believe that if you do really say, I want to change this because I want to make a better, whatever, marriage, job, uh, I don't want to be broke anymore, you can. Uh, there is a lot, there's going to be a lot of hard work to do. You have to put energy and time, but what do you think you become? So when you wake up in the morning, I think it's your responsibility to make sure that A, you are happy with whatever you've got. And maybe happiness, it's different for different people. Like if you are that kind of guy or girl who wants to have one job, one partner, go on holiday in the same place forever and ever, great. But there's a difference in between knowing it versus accepting it. That's a very different thing. So if you wake up consciously and you say, I love my life because I do, and I'm in the matrix, well then great. In the movie, by the way, the guy wanted to go back into it. You know, that's the example. Was it Cypher, the name of the guy? So, hey, if you are the guy who wants to go back in the matrix, great. But you have to be conscious of it, right? So that's my point. And I think if you do the work, if you do the homework, you don't want to go back into it because <laughs> you know what's inside. But if you truly want to go back in, into it, I respect you. The people I don't respect are the people, they lie to themselves saying, oh no, this is what I want because they don't want to change anything about it. And changes, by the way, it's, it's the number one constant to stay 
imbalance, Einstein said, right? So I agree. You have to embrace changes. You have to leave your comfort zone. You have to learn new things. And Bitcoin came in in a point where I, I've always... I was always looking for that one thing which would have ground me down uh, financially and also mentally. And I struggled in finding it. And I've done a lot of research and I've done so many things. You know, Bitcoin wasn't the first thing I found. It just came to me. And when I encountered it, I didn't even know what it was. I mean, I would lie or say, oh, I've been looking for this thing and researching. No, I just bought it because I wanted to make money. Like, uh, the first thing I thought was like, okay, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to be a millionaire in two years. That's, that's the mindset. Because sadly, the most attractive property for Bitcoin, as we speak, I think is money and price. And this is where people are being attracted to this thing. Oh, you see in the news, oh, Bitcoin, the person who bought Bitcoin at 50 cents is now a multimillionaire. What in reality, those people don't even exist anymore. Because if you purchase an asset for 20 cents and we are now at $60,000, you were sold most likely most of it at a hundred dollars, not even a thousand, because when you see so much return, unless you had so many and, or unless you lost it and you found it back again, which is a different story. There is no data around this, but I would love to see the percentage of people they purchased Bitcoin in 2011, 2012, even 2013 down to a degree, and they still have some, it would be super low. I think that's my opinion. So money and gains still is the most attractive part of it for now, but that could very much change. Maybe it will be portability, or maybe it will be ownership, maybe it will be something else. But as we speak, I think people will get to the Bitcoin train because they want to they wanna make quick profits. So it wasn't the first thing I found, it just manifested when I was ready to receive it. <laughs> <laughs> if it makes sense. It's uh it's it's fascinating to see those stories. Uh when when you see those Bitcoin stories and I heard so many already and uh there are those who where Bitcoin actually triggered something. They because they never questioned anything in their life and then Bitcoin came in their life usually because of Namagop technology and then all of a the sudden they're like, Oh, my whole life I did not see what money actually is. And then they go like, what else is wrong? What, what else can I question? And then they go in all those different rabbit holes. And that's a, it's a beautiful thing uh, uh, when, you ha when you have that. But like th that's one of my small hopes. I don't think it will be uh, true, uh, but it's my small hope that more people find Bitcoin. And with that, people actually realize the potential of it. And then also questioning other things all of a sudden. In coming in a proof of work mindset that you have to put in something, they they becoming brave, they're doing something, they're questioning other things. Like, but I, probably like most people will stay ignorant. <laughs> that's that's unfortunate the truth. I think. Yeah, the ego is gonna is gonna slow you down because you have to say to yourself, "I was wrong." Like I, that's one of the most difficult thing. There is a there is a story uh, about a dog and and a piece of metal which is kind of bothering the dog and the dog is sitting at the park and there is two old people looking at the dog and the dog is in pain, right? So the dog is sitting on a piece of metal, a spike kind of in, in his bump. And one said to the other, why the dog is not moving? And the other one said, well, it's not hurting him enough. Like we get comfortable with pain. Pain becomes easy to, oh yeah, well, it is what it is, right? Like at the end of the day, I, got, I have a job, I pay taxes, my marriage is sh terrible. I, I don't like my job, but hey, you know, it is what it is. Let me get a beer and get drunk so that I forget. That's kind of the average, right? Uh, people are trying to use whatever free time they have, which is next to nothing, to use alcohol, drugs, whatever, to forget their reality, whether in fact, if they would work on it, like, it's like, if you take a piece of paper and you say, what is it I like? As, as a human being, what is, what is it I love? I love swimming. I love the sun. I love what I, dogs. And then you live in London, which always rains. You never swim. There is never sun. Well, then you have the answer. Just move. Like, just go where the sun is shining, and where there is a pool or a sea. You can swim into it. But again, it's the ego. Like, we forget that we are capable to do whatever we want and we imagine. And I'm not talking about law of attractions. I'm just saying practical things. You wake up in the morning and you freaking put the back into it, right? 
Like you, you want a better body, go to the freaking gym, right? And, 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 and lift. If you do so, and if you eat well, and you go and do workout, you cannot be fat. It's, it's important. And by the way, I, I don't have anything against fat people, by the way, but all I'm saying is if you've got something, if you want to, if you are broke and you want to be not broke, then make a plan. Okay, start by counting how much money you spend, right? How much money you make. You can't be broke. Like, it's impossible. You can only be broke if you do nothing about it. Like, if you keep doing what you're doing, if you keep spending money you don't even know, credit cards and stuff you can afford, money you don't have, well, then you'll be broke. But the minute you say, no, I want to be in charge of my economy, forget Bitcoin, forget investing, just take a piece of paper and say, how much does it cost me to live in my city? How much money I make? How much my life costs me? You know, when you ask this question to people, they just don't even know. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Like, of course you're broke. <laughs> I mean, if you never plan, if you don't know how much is costing you to stay on this planet, well, then you have a problem right there. But again, like you said, it's laziness. It's a kind of story. Oh, but well, you know, I'll tell you a funny one. I used to smoke a lot of cigarettes. I was heavy smoker, like chain smoker. Italians, they love cigarettes. I love nicotine. I smoked for a long time. And one day I said, no. One day I said, I woke up, I was coughing blood. I was like, okay, that's it. I'm, I'm done. And cold, cold, I've said, no more cigarettes. All my friends, they hated it because they were all smokers. And when I was in London going out or in China, China's even worse, I was the living reminder they could also quit if they wanted, because I've done it. How well, Maurizio has done it. So that means I can too decide not to smoke. So what was their reaction to me? Trying to make me a smoker? Yeah, smoke one. It's just, just one, man. Come on. It's just one. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt. Is it? You are tipsy. You had a couple of beers. Just one. Because they, it was so uncomfortable for them to see me not smoking. They'd rather see me smoking again. So your network, people you have around you, and by the way, they are not evil people. <laughs> they are my friends, but the people you go out with, they define who you are. So if you are broke, if you are unhappy, besides the work you have to do on yourself, I would also encourage you to look around you and see who's around you. Because if you have successful people and healthy people and you are fat and broke, it's not gonna, it's not possible. Like you cannot have five people in your network that you see consistently, they have what you want. It's not going to be like this. Most likely the five people you see the most are going to be fat and broke. Right? So, and this is the most difficult part. And by the way, I, I'm, I'm keep giving the fat and broke example because it's the only, it's the faster to understand. I have nothing against either, but all I'm saying is people you spend time with, they will affect your mindset. And it's hard to break it because maybe those people have been around since forever. But um, I had Gary Cardone on my podcast and he said, if you have two rockets, such a beautiful thing, he said, and they move one centimeter a year, in 50 years, they are completely apart. So the person you are today in your 40s, 20s, 50s, it's a very different person about, I don't know, if you compare it to the child version, version of yourself. Some people say to me all the time, oh, you've changed so much, you've done so much. I'm so grateful of that because otherwise I'll be the same freaking person. Having around people, they will encourage you to do crazy stuff. I think it's a number one. And we forget sometimes how important that is because they will drag you down as well as maybe lift you up, right? Depends on the kind of people. And I found that big to go back to Bitcoin, the more I speak with people like you, the more I, I encounter people with, I'm not saying someone who's, like, I mean, people like you, like proper Bitcoiner, the people, they do the work, they do a podcast, they have their network in, into it. Like me, like I'm not faking anything. It's just, <laughs> that's how I live. There is a common ground there, which is rooted into our mindset, which is deeper than, oh, we're going to make money. And it's, it's all about freedom. It's all about core living kind of DNA mentality. It's like, most likely you're going to be an entrepreneur if you are a Bitcoiner. Most likely you're someone who traveled, who experienced life in a different way because it's such a risky thing to do that it's going to become appealing to someone who has done certain things, right? Whether if you are someone super conservative, 
you've never traveled, you've never done anything, it's going to be difficult to understand. So it's an easy way to actually find people tuned on your wave, if it makes sense. I don't know if you also experience it, but like one thing I really want to say to that, um, if, if someone is fat, we should be able to call them out. <laughs> it's like, um, because it, it, it's not, a, it's not a healthy thing to do. It, it's, it's, if someone has a, a knife hanging out of their shoulder, I would tell him. And I, if, if there's something wrong with, 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 with your body, you, you have to tell him, oh, like that, that's not like, I saw this video uh, on, on, on Twitter, I think like today or maybe yesterday, uh, there is in the Grand Canyon, uh, there are like routes where you can go and you can explore them and you can walk there. And oh, they check, the, out, they check your weight because you can. Yeah, I've seen it as well. Yes, and, and you have to go through two bowls. And if you cannot go through those bowls, then you cannot go there because it's just that small. And people are like, oh, we have to make them bigger. We have to destroy basically nature so so fat people can go there. Or and I'm like, oh, that's fat phobic or what? Like, no, that's, that, that's nature. And people that cannot go through that thing, they, they probably have to do something on themselves. And there is something like um, a sickness to f a fatness, like there's uh, some some uh, bad thing, like because uh, to a to a friend of mine, it also happened. Uh, she had fat on her body that she cannot get rid how much, no matter how much she drains. That's a different story. But 99% of the people <laughs> that are overweight don't have that disease. <laughs> and even this, this disease you can get rid of, but it's cost a lot of money and you get a doctor involved and all that stuff. Um, but 99% of them, they are um, uh, bigger because they have usually something mentally, like they have some addiction, like the, the, the best way probably to them would be going to do a psychology, someone to get disciplined, whatever. Like I, I don't want to get too deep in that, but I think, um, we have to get to the truth and be truthful to ourselves and, and to other people and never be rude to them. Like that's, I think that's like always, uh, spread your message with, with, with love and spread your message being kind uh, and not be like, Oh, you are fat. You should do something. No, that's, that's wrong on you. Uh, but, but saying something about that and, 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 and trying to help them, there's nothing wrong with that. And, and we have to acknowledge that, uh, being overweight is not a good thing. Like, like that we should not normalize being not healthy. I, I agree that, that that's super well said. And it goes beyond like body weight or body fat. It goes into mental, mentally as well. You can, you can be unhealthy. And by the way, you can be skinny and equally be unhealthy, or you can not be fit. Like there are things we are doing as a, as a society kind of humans into society. They are not healthy at all. Right. So I think, I think, all those things should be called out. Like I, I, I grew up in a place where my dad would slap the hell out of me if I was watching TV while having dinner. And now there's people with cell phone everywhere, you know, like, so it's not just body weight. It's, it's unhealthy things. It's unhealthy thinking. Why do you have a thought in your mind that is going to block you to become a better version of yourself? Well, take it off. Like it could be anything like nowadays, I am so careful the amount of time I spend with people because most of the people I spend time with, when I go out dinner, they check their cell phone. And I'm like, hey, dude, hello. I mean, it's supposed to be you and me. I've not seen you for a month and I'm dating your cell phone now. Like, what's going on there? So I agree we should call it out because now it, it, there is this kind of social media image which is fake. They're supposed to, what you do in your real life, you want to show everything off and that's why Bitcoin helps me grounding myself so deeply because I feel like it's, it's a way of living. It's like, it's like this, this Bitcoin standard that we are talking about. Like I, I don't have, I don't have next to, I have nothing in, in my bank account. Funny thing, when I moved to Dubai, they said to me, ah, oh, be careful Dubai, because if you, if something happens to you, uh, the bank is not going to, I'm like the bank, bro, no worries about my bank. <laughs> I have enough money to survive maybe a couple of months. That's it. Everything else is secured in, in, in Bitcoin. I don't even have it on me, by the way, because the last thing I want is to be a YouTuber and let people know I have Bitcoin so I can come in my house with a hammer, like a $2 attack, you know? No, it's, it's multi-sig, it's safe. You, you can do whatever you want to me. I don't have it on me, so I'm sorry. 
And by the way, my wife is very well aware. So something happens to me. And if I had money in the bank, millions of dollars in Dubai, I mean, first of all, I don't have it. The bank has it. And then good luck in moving it, taking it out, convert it into euros, whatever she wants to go, maybe. So it becomes that thing who reminds you about total control. And, and every time I, I buy Bitcoin, which I do it monthly, by the way, I don't care about the price. I just buy my, my DCA into it. It reminds me I'm in charge and I'm saying it with the smallest amount of ego as possible. Not in the sense that I'm the boss, I'm super cool. No. I decide today, like this morning I woke up, I went to the gym, my trainer messed me up. <laughs> so shout out to Brad. I've just started, by the way, I've never been fit in my life. So it's a new thing. I, I went to the gym, I came into the studio, I've, I've recorded a bunch of live shows, I'm, I'm doing the, this podcast. And today when I'm driving back home, I'm going to say to myself, this is the day I want it. Because it's true. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done it. And anyone can get to a point where they design the life they want. And everything starts, at least for me, for this grounding conviction, which is Bitcoin, which is going to allow me to, you know, it grounds me down because I know I am in charge of everything. But I also get it for some people it could be scary because, you know, when you take control, well, then it's on you. And if you, if you take the wrong turn and you get lost, then who else to blame? I mean, you can blame the weather, the government, you can blame your friends, you can blame your parents, you can blame society, you can blame anything you want. But at the end of the day, it's on you, man. <laughs> That's what I think. So, and do not let anyone tell you otherwise, because you are indeed the universe. So you can change whatever you want. It requires discipline. This morning, I woke up at 5.30. I didn't want to go to the gym, man. Honestly, I wanted to stay in bed and kiss my wife and maybe make love, whatever, and cuddle the cats. But I went to the gym, and I, I, I'm grateful I've done it, but um, you got to put the work. <laughs> so that's the part where most people struggle with. Because, you know, funny thing is, when you go on social media and you see a beautiful body, you see people with money, you see success, the dopamine you receive is the same amount of dopamine you have if you experience it yourself. So out of a sudden, it becomes much more convenient to get dopamine from other people. Do you know what I mean? As opposed to get your own dopamine. It's the same effect, by the way. That's why they are so powerful, because you can experience... Like there is so many people I know in my life, they actually watch people working out and they do nothing. And they think they are working out. You know, I'm like... <laughs> That's not how it works. Or you see like a rich people, a person on a plane, private jet, Rolexes, and you are experiencing the same dopamine as if you were doing it. But it's not the same thing because you're not on that plane. And by the way, I've spoken with so many successful people and if there is one thing they all say to me is the most beautiful part was to get the money or to get the success. It's like, I know it's like a cliche, but the journey is not the destination. So once you get to a point where you have all the money you want and all the success you want, well, then you need to find something to do because the most beautiful part was the path to freedom, if you see what I mean. So, and, and if you are in a place where, by the way, if you are someone who's listening, who's watching, who doesn't know what do you like, uh, what do you want, this is a fantastic place to be because you can try anything. Like, it's one of the most, Gary Vee says it all the time. I love Gary Vee. He says, if you don't know who you are, this is the most exciting place to be because you can figure it out. It's as simple as that. I love it so much. Um, I, I love our talk a, a lot right now. We're over, uh, all, all, already over the hour and, and it's, it's, it's great. Um, I had like, like five, six more topics that I want to go, go in with you, but I think I, I just nearly done like one final topic and we can make a second round in like half a year or something like that. Uh, and the final topic I would love to go within and you mentioned it so many times uh, in that podcast that you moved around a lot. Like I heard UK, London, I heard Dubai, I heard Switzerland. Uh, I think you're from Italian uh, originally, mm -hmm. like yep. uh, just from the things that I heard in the podcast, you moved around a lot. China also heard, I think, what is the most beautiful place you have been? And what, where do you think is the most freedom? Where can you find the most freedom? I love this. So... I think it depends on what time 
or what moment in your life. So there are destinations that are more appealing to a younger crowd, for example, and there are destinations where they're more appealing to older crowds. Um, for example, I've um, experienced uh, Redmond, which is next to Seattle. I was working for Microsoft and they sent me there. I hated it because I was at 27 years old and only thing you had was trees, bears, families, and nature. Now I would love it probably because I'm married and I love trees and I love bears. <laughs> so, but back then I, won't, I was 27. I wanted to drink shots of tequila and find a lady to spend, you know, months, years with. I was single, right? So I think it depends on where you are with your mindset. If there was a, for example, Dubai, it's fantastic. I think if you have, if you come with a plan. So if you come here, uh, especially being a male, a single man, uh, it would be it would be difficult. I, I heard people they can't find a companion. And it's loads of mo people with money, and everything moves around. How much stuff you've got, and whether I don't experience any of that. I love Dubai because I have a a different setup. So I think the overall place, if there was like a a chart, for example, from one to ten. Uh, I, I love Japan. Japan was one of my favorite, but as a foreigner, as a gaijin, as they call us, which means foreigner, but as a Japanese person in Japan, they probably have different opinions. I, I don't know. I, I loved it because it was more clean, more organized, more, you know, I'm, I'm that kind of guy where China was uh, something completely different, like a lot of more chaos and stuff everywhere. And where well, Japan was more organized, more kind of more Switzerland, Singapore is a beautiful place as well. But I think Japan is probably taking the crown overall. And also this was 18 years ago. So 18 years ago, being uh, like an European guy in Asia was something, you know, people would stop you in the street, take photos and all the ladies were coming, say hello, N not in a sexual way, by the way, they just wanted to know who the hell is this guy coming from Italy or Europe? I mean, I've never seen one of them before. So it was actually interesting. I have experienced, I call it reverse racism, but not in a bad way. Because um, I came to understand why. So for example, when I was in China, which was 18 years ago, I couldn't go into some places, but not because they didn't like me. It's because they didn't have insurance. So if something would have happened to the building, which lots of fire in Shanghai, by the way, and I would have died, they would have been all in trouble because they, they killed a foreigner, right? So there is always a reason down deep. And if you stop to the surface and if you don't dig deep enough, you will judge, come to a conclusion which is not the conclusion, if you see what I mean. So I'll probably say to answer your question, Japan, um, but any place I've been and been a lot, I've taken something from it. Like... Um, Irish people are probably my absolute favorite. I think it's the most sexy accent for a woman. By the way, people don't understand it. But when I, I hear an Irish lady, I melt. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I just find it super sexy. And people are great. Loads of green nature. I mean, everything has always something to offer. Um, I think beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So if you want to find beauty, you'll find it everywhere. For now, Dubai, I love it. It's a great place to be. It's not forever. Nothing is always forever, but it's a phase. It's a phase in, it's a chapter in a book and now I'm enjoying it. I don't know how long I'm going to stay here. Um, I don't think about it anymore. I just live my life on, you know, in the moment. Uh, I'm really grateful. I kind of decided to live like this. And like you said, you, you said something earlier about hell, right? It's the same for me. Like, um, and I, by the way, I, I'm well aware that my lifestyle and the stuff that I've done in my in my age and everything. It's not for everybody. I know. Like, and it's great. Well, we have diff we have to be different. We want different things. But the main thing I think you should do is ask yourself, what is it I want? You know? And as long as you have an honest answer, if the answer is staying in one place, going on vacation in the same spot, having the same car, having the same house, and you really truly want it, then great. Most of the time, <laughs> that's not the answer becomes comfortable. So long story short, I'd say Japan is probably the one who would tick most of the boxes, but it was 18 years ago. I have not gone back ever since. Maybe things have changed. I actually, I tried, but when I booked ticket for Kyoto, I want to take my wife, a pandemic happened, so we couldn't go. 
this is 2021. So now that we are closer, because uh, Japan is closer from Dubai than from London, uh, I think we will go uh, maybe next April when there is a blossom season, everything goes pink, beautiful. And then I, I'll be able to re revisit it almost 20 years later. So I'm sure things have changed <laughs> in 20 years, I would imagine. It's... Uh... It's a cool insight. Uh, I, I asked that question more and more in, in the podcast. What's uh, what is the most beautiful place you have been? And and I think it I hopeful. Hopefully, I inspire some people in the audience to like consider other places, consider other um, uh, destinations to be, and I think a little bit outside of of your own uh, country. Um, before we come to the end routine, uh, what can we learn from you besides Bitcoin and all the things that we already discussed today? I'd probably say. Stay humble and stack stats. <laughs> it's my favorite, my favorite phrase. But I would say, get out there, make mistakes, learn things, fail fast, fail forward. Because at the end of the day, if you don't, if you don't put your face in the mud, you're not going to learn anything. Uh, so the best thing I've, um, I've probably done in my life was to decided to pack and move because it's very practical. It's going to give you, you are alone into a foreigner country, you don't speak the language, your mom is not there, your friends are not there, your brother is not there, and you have to wake up quick and fast. So I would say break stuff, go explore, you know, try to see life in moments as opposed to, because that changes everything. Like it, it's so, it's so crazy that I mean, I, I could be gone in any minute. Like, I don't know what's going to happen with my life. And the idea of being maybe even aware, maybe one day I will be in a bed somewhere and I know I have a few months left to live. And the idea that there is stuff that I wanted to do and I've not done them, it would, it would kill me inside, you know? So if you've got that kind of voice into your stomach or into your soul that says to you, I would like to do that thing, you owe it to yourself to do it, whatever that might be, you know, I mean, as long as you don't arm anybody, so don't go out and just do damage because that's not cool. But if you stay respectful and if you, you know, if you don't damage anything or anyone and you want to genuinely explore, because at the end of the day, it's just like, this is why I have my podcast. Like I, I genuinely love doing these things. So that's why I'm doing them. And, and sometimes the, the simplest thing you can ask yourself is what is it I like to do? You know, and if you don't know, well, then great, go and experience things and just do stuff, you know, go and ride a horse, swim into the ocean, you know, get naked and sumo someone, whatever it is that you want to do, just do it, man. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, that's how you find things. And sometimes we stop because we have a perception of the thing, because we think we know what it is. And what, one of the biggest mistake, for example, is to say, oh, I've gone on holiday over there. That's a, I don't like it. Well, when you go on holiday, it's very much different if you live there. It's like day and night. There is places. First time I went to London uh, as a tourist, I hated it. I've been there 17 years. Amazing. I love London. Living in London as a Londoner is not a tourist. It's a completely different thing. The best you can do is probably build a backpack and take some time off, you know, that, that would be one. If I had a, I don't have any, any children, but if I had a child, I would make him or her do it. Like I would first say, you need to take a backpack and go for a year. I don't want to see you. Here's some money. Here's some Bitcoin. <laughs> Just go and travel because that, that will give you a lot of insight about there is many people. They don't have not even nearly the problems we have. They don't even have access to water, for example. They don't even have access to fresh food. You know, there are places in the US where you cannot find greens and veggies and everything is microwave ready. There is no, there is no veggies. There is no fruit. There is just like boxes in plastic with lasagnas into it. And I'm like, what? I mean, where are the ingredients? Like this is supermarket. And I'm like, of course, everyone is not healthy, right? And there's also places where they don't even comprehend the world fast food together. Like how can food be fast? It's not possible. Like, so all those things, I think you, you owe to yourself to, 
explore them, you know, and then you can decide once you've seen them, once you test them, them out, you can say, well, I consciously want to do this because I've done it. But I guarantee you that if you try some basic stuff, like and this could be very well, this go all, all goes back to Bitcoin because, you know, it's the same thing. What is money? Okay. Well, you can try to own some dollars. You can try to own some euros. You can try to own some Bitcoin. And if you truly experience what it means to own it, well, then it's a no brainer. <laughs> it's, I mean, if you truly understand why Bitcoin is needed and what problem is solving, there is no scenario where someone is not going to get it. I, I, I don't think it's impossible. You, you have to get it off, uh, uh, after some time. I, I love the insights uh, that you gave here. Um, our end routine in the podcast is where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. And your question from the previous guest is, what are you doing to make the world a better place? Nice. I love it, by the way. I cannot wait to give you mine. Uh, I work on myself uh, extensively because I think if you want to change the world, you have to change who you are. And then by reflection, you will change everything. This is something someone else has said, so I'm not going to steal the quote, but um, I do believe that by working on yourself, you're going to do a service to everybody else. So even though it could be seen as a selfish act, I think being selfish is actually the most beautiful thing you can do because if you are happy within who you are, you are happy within society. Whether if you are unhappy within who you are, then you have a problem with everybody. So work on yourself. Wonderful. I, I love it. Um, perfect. And before I let you go, um, where can people find you? What can, uh, where can people reach out to you and ask you questions? Nice. Thank you. So I have a podcast called Mr. M Podcast and where I had a beautiful chat with you. Uh, same is uh, Mr. M Podcast everywhere. So Telegram, Instagram, YouTube, please be mindful of scammers. There's a lot of people, they impersonate me and Robin. So we will never ask you about money, about investing, never. So if you get a message, even if they have a blue tick, even if they may be taken over the account or whatever it might be, do not send money to me, no Robin. We will never ask you any of this stuff. So if I contact you first, it's not me. That's, that's the rule, right? Uh, and it's not Robin either, <laughs> unless, you know, there is a reason why. And so, yeah, uh, same handle at Mr. M Podcast on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. And I have, I have a question for the next guest, by the way, if I can, because I yeah, love definitely. that. I, I, I usually do it offline, uh, okay, okay, but okay. Uh, you, you can do it right now also. I'll, I'll the, 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 the one thing I, uh, I want to say, like, I only reach out to you if I want you to have to, if I want you to be on my podcast. <laughs> that, that's, the only, that's the only <laughs> reason when I reach out to, to, to people that I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, perfect. And uh, um, uh, yeah, but you can give it to us right now. Like that would be interesting, you know. Okay. It, I, I cannot promise that it will be actually the next uh, podcast. That's why I it's also fine. usually do it uh, offline because sometimes the schedules of the podcast are not chronicle. Um, but please give it us uh, now. It would be fun to, to see. Okay, nice. So I would say, what are you going to do tomorrow? Actually, today. What are you going to do today and or tomorrow to improve your quality of life? That's, uh, that's something that it doesn't have an answer, but it should trigger you to think because nobody has an answer immediately, right? I don't know what I'm going to do today or tomorrow to make my life better, but it's not about the answer. It's about the question. It's like, what are you going to do today or tomorrow to make your life better? Uh, technically, it should be today to make your tomorrow better. Uh, and I can give you, I, I'm asking that question to myself every day. <laughs> so I have a, a long list. But uh, yeah, that would be my, my two satoshis for the next guest. That's, uh, that's very beautiful. Uh, I love it a lot. Uh, thank you, Maurizio. Thank you, uh, and for being on. Um, thank you for joining us today and also for everyone listening and watching. Thank you for joining us today. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for having me. <laughs>